guys, Ryan Fowler who is here with the Inner Game Group. Mind Chrysalis Live. I don't know what we're calling ourselves. Mind Chrysalis. <laughs> and um, we're going to, uh, two weeks ago, we dived into an interview with Robert Green. It was Diary of a CEO, his channel, interviewing Robert Green. He's the author of uh, 48 Laws of Power, uh, The Artist of Seduction, um, Mastery, The Art of Human Nature, a couple other books, bunch of bestsellers. And he really, based on his research, has a keen understanding of human nature, which, of course, um, ties in um, very, very closely into the subconscious. I, I'd say it's more uh, instinct than um, subconscious programming, but still very core to what we do. And I think it was an hour episode, and we only got to the 12-minute mark of his interview because it was so dense with uh, rich topics to comment on. So we're going to do part two of that today. There's still a lot more to comment on. Um, he talks about core identity today, which is really, really core to what we talk about because most people don't get what they want and aren't living the life they want because their deep down belief about who they are does not allow them to. How they see themselves is not a match for the life they want, but you can go in and you can actually change what you feel, what you believe about who you are, and then everything changes. There's a ton of neuroscience behind that. So we're going to touch a little bit today on um, uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear. Uh, he did a year of psychology neuroscience research before he wrote that book. We'll see what uh, he, on his website, um, see what that says about identity, but dive into this interview and about getting what we want and all the um, subconscious and instinct and, and all that stuff, really good stuff. But before we get into that, Tim and Jordan, welcome to the show. Introduce yourselves. Yep. I'm Tim Costello with Tim Costello Hypnosis. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is what all of us do. And you can even call us the people whisperers if you want, because we get down to the basic nature of who you are and teach you how to function from there, which is actually pretty natural. We're going to learn. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. Jordan. Um, all right. I'm Jordan Kurtz, Jordan Kurtz Hypnosis. I do hypnosis. That's, and I help you find limiting beliefs. I help you remove them and amplify the good beliefs that are inside of you. Um, yeah. So we do a hypnosis in a certain way to uh, make your brain neuroplastic. We use actually super neuroplasticity to make these big shifts. So we actually go in and we reprogram your limiting beliefs, get rid of Doesn't nice. in one session, but we typically get massive change in one session, not always, but most of the time. And so Dr. Green today is actually, he's not a doctor. He's just a extremely famous author. Um, He's going to talk about the stuff and then we change it. So that's what we do. And you can actually sample our methods for yourself for free. You can actually change your life possibly with our free self-hypnosis program in our Mind Chrysalis community on the school.com platform right there. Go to school.com forward slash Mind Chrysalis dash 7138. There is a six part free self-hypnosis course. Um, I am about to publish an interview with a guy who got uh, his procrastination from 9 of 10 out of 10 down to 3 out of 10 listening to the free program. One audio shifted his brain procrastination way down. I then did a live session on him and really rocked his world. The live sessions are always um, even much more intense, but the free stuff can be very powerful. I have people writing me saying I had a tension in my jaw my whole life. It's gone. Oh, I lost 50 pounds. So um, try it out because what we do, you can try for free and it just may change your life. And all it costs is some time and some exploration to find these very powerful methods, use them in your own life. So go to that website. There's a whole community there. There's an ebook on how our subconscious mind works. You're going to learn a lot and you're going to improve your life. So, um, we have a really great clip, uh, today, this interview with Dr. Uh, sorry, not Dr. Just Robert Green, uh, but not just because he's written many uh, multi-million print selling books, uh, New York number one times bestsellers. 
And so we're going to dive into it. It's going to be very interesting today. We're talking about some core stuff that really has to do with whether you're going to be happy or miserable, whether you're going to succeed in life and get the life you want or fail or be stuck in mediocrity. And again, failing in the short term or even in the medium term isn't necessarily bad because you learn stuff. But are you ever going to get to the success? Well, if you don't have these things down, we're going to talk about and you don't have your subconscious working for you with your core identity and everything we're we'll be talking about today, then you're really going to struggle. So this is very core important stuff. Before we dive into um, the interview today, uh, Tim, Jordan, do you have anything to add? Go ahead, Jordan. I got a thought, but I'm going to throw it out after you. Uh, not really. I mean, the Robert Green interview was just, like you said, so, <clears throat> so dense. Um, I, I recall Robert Green, <laughs> he, his language is very, uh, there's a lot, there's definitely a lot to unpack with his word choice. And I think yeah. it'll make more, that'll make more sense as we get into kind of the, the clip, but how he talks is very, I mean, the reason we're doing a part two is because there was just, we, we wanted to pause just every five seconds because he'd say something so and we're like, well, I kind of agree with that. So yeah. I'm glad we're doing this part two. Yeah, me too. And, you know, when I was in college, we had this one exercise in technical writing and we had to write a one paragraph instruction where not one word could be removed and it have the same meaning. Well, that's the way Robert Green writes. Every single sentence that he writes or comes out of his mouth was already well thought of, and you really can't take a word out and it mean the same. And you don't need to add other words because they add no meaning. So one thing Ryan just mentioned a second ago was happiness. What is happiness? Right? That's the real key definition. Most people will tell you, no, I don't have any Roblox. I'm functioning just fine. Yet they're ridden with anxiety or nervousness or a fear of doing something or a lack of self-worth. That's just normal. It's not happy. Happiness means you don't have all those roadblocks. Even though they don't ro look like roadblocks to you, they are stopping you from truly moving forward and being happy. So we're going to learn today about human nature and one of the things that, that Robert Greene talks about is happiness, although he never mentions it. Yeah. So let's roll with it. All right. Rock and roll. Here we go, guys. So here's Robert Greene on the Diary of a CEO channel. I'll, I'll put the um, the link isn't into the description now, but I will add it later. Um, very great, dense, dense interview. Tons of gems in here. Here we go. In your book about the strategies of war, the second strategy of war that you write about is do not fight the last war. And when I read that, what I understood it to kind of mean was about not being rigid. You know, how does one dismantle their, the prison of convention that they live in? So for that lawyer or for that person that's working in the financial district who is, you know, 47 and they're a lawyer, uh, they're a a stockbroker and they're miserable um they have somewhat been imprisoned by their own identity which is like a set of ideas from the past and i'm really obsessed with how we get out of the way of our own identity so that we can live our most fulfilling lives because even me you know there's and probably even you i've created this perception of who i am and i'm like following the instructions every day yeah, it's a trap you know that is very, very insightful what he said, that he has that awareness. But we'll keep um, – you guys hey, want Ryan, to add anything? I thought you were going to 32 minutes. What do you mean? Because that really, that really starts where the core identity starts talking. Uh, I <laughs> am basically picking where we left off, but um, <laughs> we can um, – It's up to you. Keep on rolling. It's yeah, all good. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. Um, and guys, I want to really quickly set up a little, just give you guys a little bit more background on core identity in our subconscious, like who deep down we feel, believe we are, our, our, our identity about our efficacy, which is our ability to get what we want, our capabilities, 
our value, whether we're loved or not, like all of these things tied to our core value and who we are. Like, oh, I'm an airplane pilot. Pilot. That's what I do. I'm a musician. You know, all of that. Um, James Clear, who wrote the best-selling book in history on habits, he did a year of research, neuroscience, psychology before he even wrote the book. It sold over 15 million copies at this point. I think it's translated into 50 languages. And I want to share just a really key paragraph from his book. This is from chapter two of his book. So this is on the James Clear website. So, you know, I'm not, no copyright infringement. This is on his public website. Identity-based habits. Here's what he says. The key to building lasting habits is focusing on creating a new identity first. Your current behaviors are simply a reflection of your current identity. What you do now is a mirror image of the type of person you believe you are consciously or subconsciously. Is 5 to 10% conscious, the rest 90, 95% subconscious to change your behavior for good you need to start believing new things about yourself you need to build identity based habits now you heard robert green say it's a trap what i think he means he's going to we're going to learn more what he means by that but how i view it as a trap is if you believe you're just not meant to get good things in life that deep down you're not good enough that you're not worthy of love, that other people think you're a little awkward or weird or, you know, or whatever it may be. You're you're always falling short. Um, you have anxieties over like, you know, for guys, whether girls like them, girls, whether they're pretty enough, you know, all of these beliefs about our identity. Well, guess what? Directly translates into what we do day in, day out, our habits. And that directly translates to what we get out of life and are we getting what we want? Or are we not? If your identity is not where you want it to be to get the life you want, that is the very first thing you need to change at a subconscious level. And that's exactly what they're talking about now. So we'll go back to this clip. Um, do you guys have anything to add or, or you just want to keep going? Nope. I think you're good for me. Keep going. All right. All right. Back to this. You can't fall into that. So one of the laws of power that I have, one that I think is very important, I think it's law 25 or 26, I don't remember the number, is recreate yourself. So the moment people start... Um, and we do that better than anyone else, baby. We help you create, recreate your core identity. Uh, know who you are. They, 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 they identify, they create your identity. Oh, Robert Greene is this person who writes these dark Machiavellian manipulative books then I'm trapped. I'm trapped by their perception of me. And I always have to be like a little dog performing for them. Right. And I don't want to fall into that trap. You have to recreate yourself. You have to use your personality and who you are as clay that you are molding. You're like an artist. And so you, you well, change yourself mm -hmm. for each person. You had something, Well, I, I, I sort of, I sort of like, he's like, I'm like a little dog and I have to perform for them. Well, that's, that belief is part of his identity. If he feels like it, he feels like he can't change his identity because other people see him a certain way and that's the mold he needs to fit into. He's only good enough, you might say, if he's in that mold. Uh, and and well, we would teach you do that or we Right. We would teach people, people basically like I'm doing my own thing. I don't care lie. what you think about me. Yeah. And, and again, he used the word if at the beginning, if I was known as this Machiavellian and book writer, then I would be like that dog that people would have to have me perform for them. Right. And you're right, Jordan. Um, if he did feel that way and you're right, Ryan, to say, if you are who you are, screw what everybody thinks you do you. Yeah, and he right. is talking about how, you know, other people can pigeonhole us into certain roles based on how we how they perceive us. But what we're saying is we have the power to say, nope, screw that. I'm going to do my thing. And, oh, look, I'm unpredictable. Oh, you guys thought you had me pegged. No, you don't. So it need not be a trap. Right. So um, just shout out to Jorge Diaz. Welcome to the show. 
uh, Jorge actually um, did a session, has a video interview on my videos channel. So um, killing it in sales now, man. Just uh, did self-hypnosis, tripled his sales. Um, we're going to come out with a performance program for salespeople probably in a year or so. But but because uh, we just we see salespeople just have such massive success with their methods. But welcome to the show, Jorge, my man. Very good um, person and friend. Um, yeah, keeps getting better. Keep up that self hypno. And I check in with Jorge time to time because he's just a great guy. So he's my brother from another mother here in Mexico, where I'm in Mexico City. All right. So um, back to anything to add, guys, before we go back. You know, no, no, we, the thing that we talk about is this core identity. And he talks a lot about the human nature stemming from that core identity. And we talk a lot about if that core identity is not serving you, how to rewire and reprogram that core identity. But one of the important things is where that core identity come from and why you may have to reprogram that core identity. And again, we talk about childhood abuse or we talk about childhood adverse experiences and an adverse experience, even though if you take the ACEs quiz, there are some very active things that happen to create the identity. Your parents could literally ignore you for the first eight years of your life, feed you, change you, teach you how to go to the bathroom yourself, and then ignore you all the other times of your life. And you will still develop a horrible non-productive core identity. So it doesn't have to be an active right. set of abuses that focus that, right? So realize that the things that Robert Green is talking about are the nature or natural reactions to that core identity. Where, what is your core identity is the question. And two, if it doesn't serve you and it's maladaptive, how do you redo that core identity so it does serve you? Go to the school.com mind chrysalis, watch that. It will show you how to do it, and then you can Gee. actually do it. Word. Word, exactly. All right, good stuff. Thanks, Tim. Here we go. And that's different. So for me, it means I don't write 48 Laws of Power Part 2. I write now a book that's not like the 48 Laws of Power at all. For you, it's doing your podcast but changing it up or maybe you do a different podcast or maybe you do go into a different career set maybe you become a, a ceo or, or an entrepreneur in a different direction i was recently on andrew huberman's podcast right one of the most successful podcasts besides yours in the world huberman is huge on hypnosis by the way that's my next video coming out not live show but produce video for you guys we can be Huberman on hypnosis and neuroplasticity. So keep an eye out for that. Um, we'll watch a little more and then we'll go to the 32 minute mark you were talking about, Tim. And um, he, I don't want to, that's going to sound like bragging, but he, the book mastery helped him a lot because he was a professor, I believe at Stanford. I hope I have it right. Everything was going well. He was on a fast track in, in neuroscience, but he was miserable. He hated the politicking. He hated all the bullshit that you have to go through in academia. And then he read the book and he goes, I don't know how old he was. He must have been in his early 30s. He goes, I don't want to do this. I want to change. I want to recreate myself. He decided to go into podcasting and to take all of his knowledge about science and neuroscience and bring it into a different medium. And so that's, that's extremely powerful because if he had stayed in academia, he would have gone down the path that we're talking about. It's so I'd like you guys to weigh in. What keeps people, if people are miserable, why do some people not recreate themselves? Why do they just stay where they're at? Why don't they go after and get what they want? What do you guys think? Go ahead, Jordan. I'll wait. Well, <clears throat> it's typically the belief of I'm not good enough to get what I want. So it's usually, a, I usually see it in my clients like a cycle. So they'll Maybe start. Maybe you go now, Tim, because Jordan, you're breaking up really bad. Oh, I am? Yeah. I can hear. Okay. Uh, it's better now. Okay, okay. Keep going. 
Just repeat right, so it. I usually see much. so I, I usually see it as a cycle in my clients. So the uh they'll start trying to do the thing they want to do. They'll struggle with it. Eventually they'll either fail or something will go wrong. That failure reinforces the belief they already have, which I is I'm not good enough to get what I want. And they go back to procrastinating doing anything. And yep. that cycle just repeats over and over again until eventually nothing happens. And eventually they just get to a point of, well, I'm miserable no matter what I do. So it's easier to do nothing and just mute as much of my emotions and feelings as I possibly can. So let me throw down here. Okay. It, it's all about time, right? There's 24 hours in a day. And the question you have to ask yourself is what are you doing with those 24 hours? Are you being productive? Are you doing what you want? Are you doing what you really desire? Or are you spending all that time spinning your wheels day after day after day? Because next week I'll do this new thing that I want to do. Or Tomorrow, I'll do this thing I want to do. The procrastination that we talked about earlier, Ryan, you've got that client we're going to show the your, video on. And so, your wife is such a good example of oh. this. She wanted to start businesses. She 20 or 30 times she tried. And when it came to pulling the trigger, I did all the prep work. Now I'm going to launch this thing. What would happen? Nothing. Literally. Literally. literally I mean, it, it's almost funny when I go back and see it because I've always supported her. I love her. I yeah. want her to do well, right? And and deep down, I didn't know what was wrong. I just thought maybe it just didn't work, right? So she'd get into Pampered Chef. I bought the kit. I think she was into Pampered Chef three times, right? I bought the <laughs> kit, signed up. I bought the stuff. I got all the folders prepared for the party. I'm going to have a party. The party never happens. And then it just slowly fizzles. And I don't hassle her to get mm -hmm. something done because that's not productive, right? So I just let it fade off. And that's happened well over 30 times across 38 years. But don't worry, and guys. Then, there's an app and then it. she has a, a – uh, I did a lot of work for Ryan. I've learned hypnotherapy from – not from Ryan, but his methods. I got hypnotherapy from uh, Mark down there in uh, Dallas. But Ryan is who I wanted to follow as far as a practice goes. So I got good at that and stuff. And he's like, hey, I owe you a session. I'll do it for your wife. And I'm like, fantastic. And that was a year and a half ago. And I can tell What's you that this now? year, if if she continues, remember, this is working at Walmart for 20 bucks an hour versus what I'm going to tell you. If she continues on the rest of this year, like the first course started, it's a $100,000 a year business working out of the garage. That's insane. Yeah. And it's not going to be, it's not going to stay there. It's going to grow because she's too aggressive now. I actually have to slow her down just a little bit so I can keep up right now. How many sessions for that shift? One, one freaking session. session. You can so go on. You can go on my video, the video section of my YouTube channel, and look for Carrie Costello. You can watch the interview. Yep. So here, so back to he the is question is: is why do people do what they do? It's it's comfort. It's familiar, and they want to avoid misery, pain. Comfort is safe. If misery is your brother and it brings you company, you'll just hang out with misery for whatever time it needs to be there. So you may uh, get into, and again, it's a time thing, right? How much time do you have? Okay, I'm going to spend time getting drunk. Why am I going to get drunk? Because it makes me feel better because now there's no more pain involved, right? Yeah. Subconsciously, it's all numbed out. And I feel good. I feel happy. I feel mad, whatever the case may be. Matthew Perry, in his autobiography, or his biography, I guess, I guess it's his auto life biography. When he was about 14 years old, somebody gave him a bottle of alcohol. I don't know what it was, wine or liquor, yeah. don't know. He drank the bottle, and then he laid back as he was stoned, and he said, wow, is this what real people feel like? Him equating all of this pain that he was suffering through from neglect, mostly neglect in his life, 
right? Just a lack yeah. of attention, a lot of anxiety, a lack of love, being raised by the maid. I mean, all that kind of stuff, right? Just disconnected from his parents completely. So you will do the same thing. You'll either play a lot of video games. You'll watch a lot of porn. We could watch that Terry Crews interview, and it's sad. This tremendously successful football yeah. player, and he would he get a day off. Eleven hours later, in his day off, he realized he'd been watching porn all day. Why? Good grief! He didn't feel good. So Numbing drugs, alcohol, pain. whatever. So back to Jorge. Is that why people self sabotage? Absolutely. They don't even know they're doing it and they're self-sabotaging. They're just wasting away their time. So the question is, you know, Ryan said, why do people do this? They're stuck. They don't. How does this tie into core identity? Because it, it is their core does. identity. They're not good enough. They don't feel safe. They they're mad or angry at something. Or like, like Jordan said, they can't get what they want. And if they did what get, they want, they don't deserve it. So they feel bad about having it. So it's a mixed bag for everybody, but it doesn't matter. It's all the same. So the, the key yeah. is the only way to move forward out of that is to change that core identity, just like James Clear is talking about. Yeah, there's Carrie yeah. right there. Leopard Leatherworks, that's her business. Hi, Carrie. Um, How you doing? I suspect something Robert said that was interesting was he's like, well, I could write. Can you, am I still choppy? Is it okay? No, you're good. No, you're good. You're good okay, now. good. Good. So he said, I could write part two if I wanted, but I I, I don't want to. But it, the way he said it was like, I sense that Robert has some sort of limiting belief inside his head, which is like, I don't want to be the dancing monkey for other people. I think he's yeah. self-conscious about that. Because, you know, if you look at somebody like Dr. Like Jordan Peterson, he wrote 12 Rules for Life Part 2. And I don't get the sense that he's he's ever spoken about feeling like he's trapped in his identity of being. He goes against the grain. He got yep, famous right. by so going against. He's pretty secure. And if he, was, he was in such a, you know, being a university professor. In one way, you're tenured. But another way, like all that bullshit in politics, you are you're in a trapped. Cage. You're trapped. You are trapped. And yep. he got famous and wealthy by saying, screw this. Screw what the Canadian yeah. government says about being forced to, you know, use certain pronouns. That's anti, you know, freedom of speech. I'm going to take a stand. And he found the real him by going against what everyone else yeah. told him he should. Yep. And he's yeah. taken some flack. He's had made some enemies, but at the same time, um, he's gotten massively, massively more successful as a result. Yeah. Well, so um, my, my, our deep down agree, inner, my, our deep down beliefs. When when Robert Greene says I have to be this dancing monkey, that's his belief. That's subconscious. Yes. And you don't yeah, you don't I, have I to be a dancing that. monkey. And my my he point he was, has. he seems like. He's afraid of being pulled, like of being defined by other people so much so that he didn't want to write that. You know, if he did write it and he's like, I have more to say on laws of power and I want to get the message out, he could have done that. And then he could have moved. Like, I, I sense there's a little bit of external, he's feeling the external pressure to. Like he doesn't want to feel external pressure, but the best way to not be pressured is to just have the core belief that no matter what I do, I'm good enough. And it doesn't matter what other people think. I want to write. I don't need to do anything to be good enough. I don't need to prove anything to anyone. I'm already good enough just for who I am. If others don't see my value, it means they're blind and cannot see it. Doesn't mean I don't have value. When you get your good core in, unlock that cage. I remember my interview with you because I did a session with you, Jordan. You felt you were trapped in a cage and we freaking let you out. What was that like? It Do you remember was, saying that? Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, but it was the cage of I am a bad person for trying to improve myself. You're yeah. not allowed to you're not allowed to even think about improving yourself. 
That's identity. I'm a bad person if I do this. I, yeah. that's identity. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a real. So let's, let's jump back yeah. to Jordan's comment about uh, Robert Greene. Robert Greene has subconscious trauma. He admitted it. When he, almost, when he was younger, he reason. felt insecure, all that kind of stuff. And then I think writing is his drug. I think writing is the thing that he sorts things out and occupies his mind. Yeah. And look, I mean, the result is good financially and publicly, but you can hear him, Jordan. You're exactly correct. Yeah. He's still stuck. Yeah. We'll do a session for you, Robert. Come on, Absolutely. man. I'll do it for free. You just yeah. got to... Tell everyone the results. That's it. And that does not um, make Robert Greene a bad guy. This makes no, Robert Greene very awesome. freaking human. Yeah. Yeah. It makes him human. We all struggle, yep. but we can get over this stuff. We can change your mind. And now you have confidence, just like Carrie Leopard Leather works right here. You know, or just go to the, there's, there's two dozen testimony. I got another five to put up and I just got to edit them. And I'm actually going to do, weekly lessons and um one case study per lesson so there's a lesson and hey here's a person whose life is different now when this lesson's been applied so i got another five to release but carrie's is in their video section tons of client interviews people one session two session three sessions changing their life so um yeah very good all right so um by the way robert green talks about in another interview he was a loser most of his life until that yep. book, 48 Laws of Power. So he's got some toxic chain. He's like, I was a loser. I was a failure until that book came out. And you can kind of tell in his energy. Um, honestly, I think he's a great guy, but there is kind of a certain meekness there or something. Would you guys mm -hmm. say? Maybe Absolutely. tied to some well, level of doubt, even though he's an incredibly intelligent guy. I, All right. I so deep, um, down, deep down, he is a nice, thoughtful man. Yeah. But – he yeah, is riddled great. with the subconscious trauma that was developed in his childhood that he hasn't shaken yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's just, well, you hear it ahead. in the way he speaks about himself. Mm -hmm. That's always, that's the one thing that I, I got really good at listening to is listen to how people talk about themselves. Do they generally seem to like themselves or do they put themselves down? Do they, are they generally, optimistic or are they generally pessimistic like it, it, it's all revealed in the in the word choice yes yeah um do you have a time stamp let's go to the 32 minute do you know exactly where in 32 minutes or just 32 start just start right at 32 it's good all right all right rock and roll here we go skipping forward i watched this whole thing but i can't remember what's at 32 but we're gonna find out you you know so let's do it I trust you. Here we go. We find our purpose if we are able to and lucky enough to discover it. What's the variance in what someone's capable of that's found their purpose versus someone that hasn't, do you think? Like, what's the difference in how they So hang on one second right there. The results they create, the impact they have. So I like this guy a lot, but he has yeah. a lot of subconscious trauma. Did you hear what he said? If oh, he already, yeah, he's talked about it. He's like if, another Alex Hermosi, man. Yeah, I know. If, if we dis if we're lucky enough to discover our purpose, which leads you to the belief that you may not find your purpose. Yep. I could tell everyone right now what our purpose is. Yep. Be happy. Go, at, go after what you truly want the most in going after it. You are going to move forward. You are going to learn things. You're going to experience things. You're going to learn and grow. Maybe you go after what you want and you find out it's not what you want. And now you know what you really want. Great. Yep. Or maybe you go three, four things until you find out what you really want. Great. You're learning and growing. Go after what you want because only what you want the most is going to give you that true motivation to move forward through all the hard stuff and get the most learning and most, most growth. We're here to learn and grow. Go after what you want until you get it or until you find out, oh, it's not really what I want. All A right. lot of times it really is. But if yep. it isn't, you're going to get more data on what you really want. Totally cool. Do it. Just take action. Take intelligent action. Don't take needless and risk, but take intelligent. Remember, remember what I just said about word choice? Tim nailed it right on the head. 
<laughs> He's using that word lucky. That's that's exactly right. It ain't luck, exactly right. is it? It ain't luck. It's not luck. He's a CEO. But, it's a lot of hard work. Right. But yep. he, there, there are random events that come in that like, you know, can make it go this way or that way or whatever. But it, it tends to be if something happens to us that sets us back. If you have self-belief, you keep going until you get there. Yeah. The, the analogy I like is I read this and this isn't mine. I read this in one of my books. It was uh, it was like a big think of like a big like bingo hopper. You know, and they have the little, all the little bingo balls in there. Yep. Yeah. And you can't change what comes out, but let's say there are gold balls and white balls, and the golden ones are, you know, soup, the really successful ones you want, and the mm -hmm. white ones are kind of neutral. You can't change what comes out, but you can change the amount of golden balls in the hopper so that your probability increases that you'll be successful. You won't guarantee it but you can take the actions and align your self-beliefs to increase the probability to be successful yeah if that's, you want to call it luck the yeah. way you increase your luck is to provide as many opportunities as you can and right. prepare along the way right yep. those are the gold balls that you're talking about yep. luck is nothing more than preparation and opportunity because we could we perceive it as something random. Absolutely not. You've prepared yeah. and prepared and prepared, and then you recognize the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. And let's say you're going, let's say you make an attempt to do something and your chance of success is 1%. And then you get it and you're like, oh, I got lucky. It's only 1%. Well, yeah. If you get on the first try, yeah, you got lucky. But you know what? Your success, 1% chance, your success is guaranteed if you keep trying. Maybe it happens on the 50th try, maybe on the 100th, maybe on the 200th. But let's say on the 150th try, that 1% chance of success, you thread the needle, you get it. That wasn't luck. That was you trying 150 times till you got there and learning and growing along the way. Along Probably what happens along the way is after doing it a certain number of times, now you, you've got more skill, you got more knowledge. Now your chance of success is 2%. Now 5%, right. now 10%, right. now 20%. And then you succeed and people are like, oh, you're so lucky. It's like the law of large numbers takes away the element of luck. Correct. Now so, let's talk about what luck really is. Luck is the result of you profiting from some game of chance, right? If you throw all those 95 lottery balls in the thing and they all come up to be your number, that is luck because coincidentally you happen to guess or the computer guessed for you all of the numbers that were going to randomly pop up. But that's yeah. not what we're talking about because life know, is not a game of chance. Know there's no such thing as luck. Yeah, life is not a game of chance. Life is a prepared activity that you need to pursue opportunities, figure out what you like, and then get there. And the best way to increase your success not luck success is to prepare that core identity to set you up for success because quite frankly no matter what happens you're going to be successful yeah if you keep going and learning and, and growing yeah if we go or, back to the or clip, you stay small it's your choice yep, i had one more thought. your identity is going to shape that go ahead yeah i had one more thought on the the question he asked in the clip which was about our he talked about people who are lucky enough to find their purpose. And I think there's so much packed into that question. I want to oh take it goodness. one more direction. I want to say, I suspect he's asking that question because he has a belief inside of himself that I'm not good enough and I need to find my purpose so that I can achieve something so that then I'll feel good enough. I think that's where he's going because I yes. think people that, already feel like they're good enough aren't they're not like swimming around being confused about what their purpose is they just do whatever their identity kind of tilts them towards at the given moment and that makes them feel like they're doing what's right at the time and so this ever i, I think he's looking for some external validation to give him purpose 
And that's mm -hmm. why he's asking that question. And I've noticed that I, cause I've seen other YouTubers ask that same question about purpose and meaning. And I suspect that it's rooted in external validation. They're trying to find some oh, he, external he, he validation. He said that on another interview, the Gabor yeah. Mate interview. He's pursuing success to be good enough. He's already, so probably two, three weeks, we'll hit the Gabor Mate interview with Diary of CEO. He's going to say that. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, All I'm, right, let's I'm roll, man. Let's roll. Yep. Rock that, and roll. That was let's enough, and Robert Green hasn't even spoken yet. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? All right. When you find your purpose, it's like everything falls into place. Right? Bingo, you need right to, there. You don't need to almost right do there. anything. You'll it just feels right. That is a significant, significant statement. So large, yep. there's not even a word to contain it. He didn't say if or maybe you're lucky enough. He said when. When you find your purpose and the rest goes on, right? There, there's no faking it after that. Um, Jorge asked, what do you guys think about imposter syndrome? Do you want to weigh in? I have Real. thoughts on that, but well, it's it's you don't you you don't deserve what you get. It's that simple. You're not good enough. You you can't believe you got there. You don't believe you should be there. So now you start faking it till you make it, which quite frankly is a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah. And you used to work in Walmart World Headquarters and you saw these high level executives. You said, I think you said every single one had imposter syndrome. Not, not all of them, but there were a few that you could tell that were, even though they were the EVP. And by the way, being an, an executive vice president at Walmart is a significant milestone. It's yeah. monstrous. They're oh. paying you probably four or $500,000 a year salary, plus yeah. a bunch of stock options and stuff like that. It's a big deal. You're a multimillionaire if you get that. Yeah, and when somebody gets up in front of a crew of people, like store managers or market managers or something like that, and they start self-deprecating, you know that they don't truly feel that they belong there. Yep. And that is imposter syndrome. If people yep. knew who I really was deep down, they'd see I don't deserve this. I don't right. deserve to be here. I'm not good enough or competent enough for this. So I have to put on a mask of being accepted. I have to be something I'm really not. I'm an imposter. Yep. Yeah, that's imposter syndrome. Uh, yeah. If you feel good enough just for who you are, like I said, uh, some of what I said earlier is actually the good beliefs we put in people after we get trauma out. We put this deep down in your core identity, subconscious identity. I'm good enough just for who I am. I have massive value just for who I am. I don't need to do or say anything to be good enough. I'm like a diamond. It just has intrinsic value. It just has it. If others don't see my value, it doesn't mean I don't have value. It means they cannot see my value. That's their blindness. That's their problem. Now, everything I just said does not mean you're entitled to get what you want. You have to go out and work for what you want. Yeah. But if you believe you deserve it, that you're worthy of it, you're, and that if you do the work, you can get it. If you have that in your core, you got to do something with your, with your time. You're going to go after what you want. Because why not? It's the coolest thing to do. <laughs> it's what you're going to be motivated to do when you believe in your ability and value. And then you right. just go out and get it. And you have ups, you have downs, you have failures, you, you have successes, but you're on the path. And the failures don't mean you're not good enough. It's just practice learning and growing. So the sting of failure is greatly reduced. You believe in yourself. You go forward. You do great things. That's your wife right now, Carrie. Yep, she's doing we got it. her unstuck, and now her business is just going through the roof. Um, this guy whose testimony I'm going to show this week, the video I'm giving you guys this week, I know it's been coming for a while, but it, it turned into kind of like four videos and blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> he struggled his whole life financially, did, did, um, did the self-hypnosis, got unstuck, and like in the last two months, he's hit like – he's. He's at a pace of making six figures. He's never done that before. And he told me, he's like, Ryan, this can't be a coincidence. What the hell? All of a sudden, I got all this money coming in. It's like, that's what happens when you fix your core identity. You know? Well, so what happens in that, and I don't know that particular case in detail, but yeah, you'll, you'll I, see. I can likely suspect that he's no longer wasting time. 
He's just oh, getting he's ass. just getting to the business, and yeah. all of a sudden, it luckily gets better. It doesn't. It isn't luck. He's working his butt off, and he's working his butt off efficiently. And guess what? The results will come. Yeah. And you will have ups and downs, but you're resilient and you keep going because you got that deep core inner belief. Your identity is now a match for success. Correct. And for just being happy, you know, all, all these other good things. Okay. So back to the show. Just, yeah, there's so much to riff off of here. Find whatever you need to find. Think good things will come to you. I know that sounds woo-woo. I know that sounds mystical, but I definitely right there. believe it. Right there. Right. He just so, didn't believe in what he just said. We only said. made it five more seconds, Tim. <laughs> right. But he, but he, he, right there, there's Jordan's words again about self-destructive behavior. He literally said something that was absolutely true, couldn't believe he said it, and then now tries to, to bring it down. All right. I want to play it again. Let's pick it apart. It's not like you have to try so hard. Definitely come to you don't need to almost do anything. You'll find whatever you need to find. Think good things will come to you. I know that sounds woo-woo. I know that sounds mystical, but I definitely believe it. Right? He doesn't and believe so, it. He knows that? it. He knows it, but he doesn't believe it. Um, I think he believes it, but maybe he's, you know, um, Maybe a little, you know, he's like, I know this is woohoo and mystical. Maybe he's just worried about how others perceive it. Why would he worry? He's the man. Toxic shame, feeling yeah. not good enough, feeling. Okay, uh, Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like you have to try so hard. Yes, you have to learn skills. Yes, you have to apply yourself. Yes, you have to work hard, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But things just go so much more smoothly when you have it. So, for instance, one thing that happens when you have a sense of purpose, and I hate to, uh, it's something that I feel. Um, so I, I know my narcissism is coming out again. Um, yeah, that's a little self-deprecation again, right? Yep. Oh, yep. here I am, a narcissist. No, you're not a narcissist, man. A narcissist would not self-deprecate. That's right. Um, we do all have some narcissistic traits. It's not a bad thing to to have some sense of um, value, self-importance to have some sense of what I want matters. You know, it's narcissist it, that, that kind of bit of selfishness is cranked up to 11 and everything else is toned down to zero that, and no empathy. That's, that's what's bad, but narcissistic elements, we all have them. And to some degree, they are a good thing. I know what I don't want. That's, you don't know the power of that. You can't imagine how powerful that is. So people come to me all the time with, Robert, we can make a lot of money doing this. We could try this. We can, Let's make a TV show out of the 48 Laws of Power. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's make a game. I'm not interested. It's not my purpose. No, I don't want it. If I didn't have that radar, I'd be spreading myself out into eight different venues. And I'd be, you know, all of my energy would be would be scattered. I wouldn't have that focus and I'd probably end up being pretty miserable because I would have lost my purpose. But when you have a sense of purpose, it's like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to, do, I want to do this. Yeah. That's me right now. That's why we have a show. It can be That's rigid. Right. You have to be a little bit flexible. So if somebody comes to me and goes, Robert, what about this? I'm open to it. That sounds moderately interesting. All right, maybe I'll try it, you know? And I, and I do open things, things like that. I'm going to be doing, in a month, I'm going to be recording uh, a French version of, you know, the master class. Mm -hmm. There's a French version of that. So, you know, I'm not so rigid where I can only write books. I can try other things because I can see value in it. And it interests me. It's a challenge. Being able to say no is so important and, and is so empowering. And that's what a sense of purpose will give you, to, uh, among other things. Bingo. There's a quote that says... So, man, this guy... Everything he says is so rich and yeah. full. So one of the things, you know, you found with Jorge, I've only met Jorge through video, right? I just see him on the videos. Jorge's a stud. Uh, Come to Mexico City, Jorge. Taco. Baby. <laughs> but I'm Monterey right now, but him know, and the other guy that we're talking, if you notice that when Robert Green said, and when you have a purpose, you now no longer, you now know what you want to do. And you now say, this is what I'm going to do. So Jorge 
gets up in the morning and says, here's what I'm going to do. And he doesn't procrastinate and he doesn't delay any things and stuff like that, right? He just gets to it. So I'm not surprised that his sales have tripled, right? He's not wasting time anymore. He's so efficient. He's not bound by a bunch of useless activities. Uh, I'm writing to Jorge. Hey, right away. <laughs> I'll, I'll, um, I think uh, my only comment on Robert's, what he just said there was, you know, but if he did want to, you know, do a TV show or do those things, he, he could, and that would be, but it has to be part of his identity. It has to be something he wants to do. And so he's allowed to, you're allowed to discriminate on the, on the choices you make. That's just called, you know, I guess choosing. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So so yeah, he's he's choices. gonna say something here later. I don't know if we're gonna have time to get to it today, but he talks about somebody wanted him to do a TV show on the all this stuff, right? And there's eight hundred people involved in stuff. So if he were smart going into that operation, he would write a contract that says, I have one hundred percent total and creative control over my product. They would, never, they would never override anybody at any time or I'm going to leave. That's it. They would never sign that. Then then, we, then he doesn't have to worry about doing it. See that's it. why he's not doing it. That's correct. <laughs> there you go. Bingo. It works. He, uh, that's the point. He's like, I wouldn't have control. They're going to change that's all right. sorts of stuff. And, you know, I'm just going to ride. That. And I so if you know you're not going to have control, and corrupted. you say, yes. Yeah. How much money do you have? And here's the contract I'll sign. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, and like, but Masterclass probably is giving him plenty of control. And that's why he probably likes you working know with it. them. You it's know like, it. yeah. you know what? You know, we want to, I mean, that's the point of Masterclass, right? Is they want to feature these experts. They want to, you know, give people that, the experience that's of value. that person. Right. I, I've taken some of those courses. It seems to me that the instructors um, get to do it their way, which is how it should be. They're the experts. Masterclass mm -hmm. isn't the ex yeah. is not the expert on their They're subject. the master. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, maybe one day I'll do a master class. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. But um, all right. So purpose, very important, by the way. Um, my last job, uh, I still do it a little bit. Uh, I take, you know, the the juicy projects, but I phase it out about 80 percent. Um, estate planning, protecting rich folks, wealth from lawsuits. Uh, wrote a book with a law emeritus law professor. Um, very high paying job, you know. And but then I found this technique that cured my manic depression. And then five years ago, I started using, that was 12 years ago, five years ago, I started using this to help others. And it's like, oh my goodness, this changed my life. And like that is changing other people. People all the time come to me in one session, probably 90% of the people who come to me, 5%, I can't help. It's not, you know, I'm not God, but let's say 90% of people who come to me, their lives are forever changed. Like they will tell you, he changed my life. That, I mean, when that happens, when you are in that working with this people person, you go into the dark night of their soul and then you show them they're doing the work, but you guide them through the process of healing themselves with stuff they have struggled with for decades. And like that, it's gone. That's my purpose. I, I, I saw, I used to drive a Porsche 911 Turbo, sold it, got out of the U.S., went to Mexico City. Why? Because I found my true purpose and I will do this till the day I die. Mark, mark, mark my words. So, and no regrets at all. It's freaking awesome when you find, but you know, I was a very good fit for that old job too. I still enjoy it. Um, there's still parts of it I enjoy. I still do it a little bit, but man, when you find your purpose, nothing beats it, man. Yep. Yeah. Um, anything to add, guys? I think this uh, is no, probably a pretty good stop in place. Was there know. anything? <laughs> and we got like a minute and a half into that part. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, this guy, when he speaks, it is so rich, literally full of truth. 
Wait, wait yeah. till we get to the Diary of CEO interviewing Dr. Gabor Mate. We'll probably go through oh, a minute yeah. of that clip and spend an hour yeah. on it. <laughs> again, again. Well, yeah. if you want, we, you can play it a little more. I think there's. Maybe. All right, we'll play a little more. Um, yeah, we got a more minutes. We'll left. get to the next ju juicy tidbit and then discuss, and then we'll wrap it up. There's sure. something like distractions come dressed up as opportunities, and to even know what a distraction is, you first must understand what your goal and what your purpose is, or else it's impossible to distinguish between a distraction, Robert, go, let's go start a game, <laughs> or, or an opportunity, which is, sounds much more like that mastermind thing. And I think about this all the time. You know, the, the more clear I am on the goal and what my purpose is, the much easier it is to understand what a distraction is versus yeah. an opportunity, because they do look the same when they come into my inbox. <laughs> yes. Well, the other thing I do is I kind of game it out. So if somebody comes to me and they go, Let's do a television show, The 48 Laws of Power. And believe me, I've been through that about 85 times, people coming to me that, and we have even attempted it. But I go, I've worked in Hollywood. I've worked in television before, before I have my books. I know the process. I know how miserable it can be. I know how you have no power. I'm a writer now where I write books, and I have all the power. I have all the control. You go into Hollywood, you go into television or film, 85, you know, 800 other people join in and they all have their ideas and they change this, that, the other. You have no power. And, and it's meetings and meetings and meetings and talk, 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 talk. I game it out and I go, I don't want to get into that trap. I don't want to be spending a year having meeting after meeting after meeting, hearing about this possibility, having it changed by this producer. I game it out and I go, no, I don't want to do it. Can you do that when you're younger? Can a 21 year old? No. No. Takes a lot no, of, I, takes I don't believe of that. Experience. You got to learn and grow, man. And some lessons there, are hard. So, can a 21 year old do that? The answer is yes, they can if they have a solid core identity. They'll know exactly what they don't want to get involved in. Now, they may Very not have the experience to understand everything behind their decisions, but guess yeah. what? they're going to get themselves in less trouble by doing that. And, and very few have a core that solid, especially at that age. True that. True that. You know? Yep. I don't yeah. disagree with that, but they can, there's a possibility. Yeah. There's a possibility. Sure. I find it. Um, you, go ahead. Um, my comment was, I find it interesting that they're going to the author who wrote 48 laws about power and yet they want to take power away from him. <laughs> And yeah it's like i don't there's a little bit of irony there away from the yeah. guy who wrote the book let's take all like, the creative control away there's a yeah, broken just, bunch of people in hollywood it's it's just, everything because there's a broken money. bunch of people in hollywood yeah hollywood yeah. it's it's kind of like a place where you go and if you succeed you look really good but you're probably miserable yep yeah it's a lot of those people it's unfortunate and I mean, you see it. I mean, it's everywhere. A lot of drama coming out of Hollywood, but yeah. it is what it is. Yep. Okay. That's so it. So that, wrap if up. you guys have anything to add, go ahead. Otherwise, we'll wrap it up. I'm good. All said. No, I think yeah, <laughs> we we got through a little bit more <laughs> today. <laughs> um, dropping well, lots of nuggets of wisdom, but. Um, now, this is our, to be fair, this is our show. I mean, it should feature us. So, you know, that's right. Yeah. Um, if you get your core identity, right, just go out, try things, learn, grow. There is, there's, when it comes to finding your purpose, if you have to try 10 things that are not your purpose to get to the 11th, it is, you would not have found your purpose if you didn't go through the 10 things that weren't right for you. So, Message to our audience, don't be afraid to try. If you try and fail or it's not for you, it doesn't mean you're not good enough or you're failure or loser or you're dumbass. It means you're learning and growing. A lot of um, Robert Green said most of his life till I think age 38 or so, he literally said on this show or another show he's interviewed on, I was a failure and a loser most of my life. He wasn't a failure and a loser most of his life. He was learning and growing, building skills. Do you think he had the skill to write 48 um, 
48 laws of power just like that. No, he was building skill. He was learning and growing until he got to the point where the big break came. But yep. being a loser, being a failure, no, it was preparation. It was learning. It was growing. Just like Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison would not have invented the light bulb if he gave up after 10 tries. That's right. He did 1,000 tries. Some say 10,000. I'm not sure. 1,000, 10,000. I don't know the real number, but I know he tried a lot. He fell a lot. It didn't mean he was a failure. He kept going. When you believe in your ability and value, that's identity. I have value just for who I am. The more I do anything, the better I get. That's an identity belief. You get that in your core, explore, learn, grow. Find When you find your purpose, keep going until you win. And there is fulfillment and meaning and lots of learning and growing and basically fulfilling your destiny by following that blueprint. It's a great blueprint to follow. That's our show for today. Um, if you are stuck in your core, or maybe you're just like, ah, man, I procrastinate more than I really want to. Mindchrysalis.com, boom, right here. Go here, sorry, guys. Go here, try it out. It's free. It's you can book one-on-one -on -one sessions. You look down in the description. Um, I I don't know if you guys offer it, but I offer free 30-minute consults. You can schedule you talk for Absolutely. half an hour for free. I don't charge you a dime. And I, I go to the video section and watch all the client interviews. That's typical. It's typical. That's what we do all the time. Watch my client interviews. You want that? Walk your path. Find your purpose. That's our show. Um, you can do it, guys, because you really do have more power than you know. That's our show. Thank you. Yeah.